Hello, my dear friends. Happy Sunday. Today is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it and study the Word of God. Uh, today we will be reading passage number 41 out of the Holy Shit of the Bible. Last week we read passage number 40, enjoying the last triumph of Moses, our buddy, God's conduit. And so today I uh, thought I'd try something a little bit different, come outside. Hopefully the uh, noise isn't uh, too distracting. So passage number 41, killing verse injuring a slave. And I'm in Exodus chapter 21, verses 20 through 21 in the New Living Translation. If a man beats his male or female slave with a club and the slave dies as a result, the owner must be punished. But if the slave recovers within a day or two, then the owner shall not be punished since the slave is his property. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's try the King James Version. And if a man smite his servant or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall be surely punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. Great. Lovely. Just before God and Moses are really about to get their lawmaking groove on and turn out the covenant code beginning in chapter 21, God squeezes in one last bit of godly advice in the last verse of chapter 20. Verse 26 in chapter 20, And do not approach my altar by going up steps. If you do, someone might look up under your clothing and see your nakedness, according to the New Living Translation. Oh God, you old silly rascal, you... Were you really reminding your elect, sophisticated, high society of the upper echelon dunes people to mind their virtuous manners? Certainly a people willing to accept and enforce your overabundance of truly divine commandments, rules, ordinances, and laws such as that of Exodus 21 verses 20 to 21 need no reminding. Their state of mental destitution and comprehending a shred of the humane is far too great to facilitate even the slightest reminder of ethics. On the subject of ethics and morality overall, let's investigate yet another fine example handed down as an edict from the alleged source of morality itself. This is after the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, of chapter 20, and begins the next and major leg of the mitzvot, the 613 laws of the Torah. Exodus 21, verse 1, now these are the judgments, laws, which thou shalt set before them. Soon we find ourselves at verses 20 to 21, where God reveals another ray of his character and morality by outlining the treatment of slaves. Many commentaries pronounce the death of the slave by way of beating is in itself the just punishment the owner bears as the slave is his own property or his money. Cambridge Bible for Schools and Colleges Commentary says, If the slave survives a day or two, his master escapes even the comparatively light penalty of verse 20, for then it is clear that he did not intend to kill him, but only to correct him. He is his money, his master's property, purchased by his master's money. His master is considered to have sufficiently punished himself by the loss of his property. Right. Kyle and Delich Biblical Commentary on the Old Testament says, The case was different with regard to a slave. The master had always the right to punish or chasten him with a stick, according to Proverbs 10.13 and Proverbs 13.24. This right was involved in the paternal authority of the master over the servants in his possession. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, meaning remain alive, it shall not be avenged, for he is his money. By the continuance of his life, if only for a day or two, it would become perfectly evident that the master did not wish to kill his servant, and if nevertheless he died after this, the loss of the slave was punishment enough for the master. Jesus. Pulpit commentary. He is his money. The slave had been purchased for a stun of money, or was at any rate money's worth, and the master would suffer a pecuniary loss by his death. It's quite the exhibition, and one of many, when theological acrobatic aces attempt to maneuver around this one. 
The usual round of blanks include embarrassingly juvenile blabber blunders such as, you have to consider the context and the culture and the era. Got it. God is cultural and wickedly barbaric. Lots of people had slaves. Slaves were normal. Got it. Okay. It's okay to own people and beat them. There are slaves in the world today. Got it. That must make it okay. Maybe God likes it. Okay. What clearly surfaces here is the unspeakable amount of pride and utter lack of empathy on the part of anyone who will not condemn passages such as this. Ah, I hope you all have a great week. And uh, as always, thank you again for the support and purchasing this book. It's available in the TikTok shop. There's some hard covers left. I have paperbacks on the way. But really, you and yours go have a great week. Much love to all of you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.